Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez VoiceOvers. How are you doing today? In the previous video, we recorded a media item, and now it's time to save our work and get it ready for delivery to the client. And so working with projects, that's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be saving projects within Reaper and everything that goes with it, including file organization, something extremely important. And then we're going to be looking at the render window and wildcards. Now, if this is your first time within this video, especially if this is your first time within Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell setting it to all, and watch the video all the way through so that you don't miss anything. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And so with that, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, we have Reaper here, and that's the project that we did in the previous video. But we also have Finder here, and I wanted to show you what a project actually looks like. And so I have the hard drive going all the way through Documents, and then there's this Reaper Media that's automatically generated whenever we do Reaper. And then everything is put under Reaper Media. Let's clean all this up using the Save command. Now we can either go to File, and we can go to Save Project, or we can do Command S, and either way, we're greeted with this. Now, we can expand this window by clicking on this thing, and then we can have a better view of what's going on, or we can just keep it compact. Let's say that the title of this project is going to be Test123. Really original. <laughs> anyway, create subdirectory for project. You really, really want to do this. Everything for this project is going to be incorporated inside this folder called test123, in which is going to reside a .rpp called test123. Move all media into project directory. Right now, this media item, this WAV file actually, is not under a test123 folder. It's under Reaper Media. What we want to do is create a directory called test123 in here. And then using those global project settings that we set, we're going to create a subdirectory in here in test123 called media. Then inside media, the wave and the repeaks file are going to go into that directory. And then there's going to be a .rpp file called test123 inside the directory. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. Copy rather than move source media. You can do this if you want. I'm thinking of something like room tone. If you want to have a copy of room tone inside the project with the project, and that's always a good thing. Well, then on the first time that you save this project, if you have the room tone in the project already, then it'll be copied over to that media subdirectory. And then from that point on, you can just uncheck this unless you import something else. For now, let's keep it unchecked so that we really do move everything. Now, whenever I hit save, watch what happens. Let's take a look at what it looks like in a physical realm. Here we have Finder. And you can see that indeed the WAV files have moved from Reaper Media. And you'll see now that there's a project directory called test123. Inside test123, we have the control file, the .rpp file, with the project name as its file name. And then global project settings, we set it up as raw audio, not as media, but as raw audio. And then inside raw audio, we have the wave and its repeaks file. This is what I'm talking about, good file organization. And in fact, later on in this video, you're going to see another folder being created here called renders, and that's where the final product is going to go. Speaking of that, let's set that right now. Now we can go under Options, and we can go under Preferences. And then we go all the way up to General, and then Paths. And Default Render Path, this is where we're going to set this. Again, there's three ways we can do this. We can either say, don't put anything in here, and the final product is going to be in the project folder itself. Or we can do something like that, which is always bad. You know, it's a centralized directory. All of your MP3s, all of your WAV files, all of the client files will go in there. Or we can do a relative reference. 
like that. Now, what this says is that whenever I render this project, a subdirectory called renders is going to be created if it's not already there, and the final products are going to go into that folder. That is the power of this wonderful preference. So we hit apply and OK. And now it's time to talk about rendering this thing, converting what we have in Reaper into the final product. That's what rendering is. There's a few ways we can get to render. We can go file and render, or we can do option command R. Either way, we're greeted with this. This is a very, very important window to say the least. Let's go from the top and work our way down and let's start with the tail. Please do not add the tail. What the tail says is it's going to add a thousand milliseconds or one second of basically nothing. What this is meant to do is to allow music reverb or delay to finish. And because we're not doing that, we don't need it. In fact, it is a hindrance, so let's not do that. Output, normally directory plus file name equals the render to path, but because we did the options and we said we want the renders to be in that relative directory, that's why we're able to see all of this stuff. Now the file name is the project name right now. Let's make it a little bit more generic by using what's called wildcards. And the way that we do this is by going to wildcards and say project information, and you'll see all these things with the dollar sign in front. These are variables. And if we do project, for example, it pulls the project name and puts it in the file name, as you can see there. Remember in the global project settings, we went to notes and we typed in our name within the author input line. Well, this is where it comes into play. Let's say underscore, and again, wildcards, project information, and author. And now the name is inside the audio file name. This is very, very cool. Now let's talk about options for a second sample rate. Remember we want to record and we want to hand in at 48K. Channels. If you're doing something with music that is stereo, or if you're a podcaster and you have the host panned to the left a little bit, and you have the guest a little bit panned to the right, then stereo would be cool. Other than that, please set this to mono. Let's take a look at the primary output format and the secondary output format. This is something that's new with version six. It's wonderful. Primary output format, let's say is wave. So we change it to wave. 24 bit PCM or 16 bit PCM, or if you're doing IVR, here is where you would put 8-bit mu law. Remember in the global project settings, when we were setting the defaults, we did not set this to 8-bit mu law. Well, this is where you would do your rendering into 8-bit mu law here. Let's say 24-bit PCM here. No markers and regions this time, because this is going to the client. Now, if the client's an engineer, then sure, no problem. That takes care of wave. Let's take a look at the secondary output. Let's say that they're MP3. And the defaults that we had set up show here. Now, if you notice, it says two files. If we click on it, it says, here are the two files that I'm about to render. Under renders, I'm going to do test123 underscore Stephen Gonzalez dot wave and dot MP3. They're both seven seconds. This comes into play whenever we're talking about region rendering. Each region will have its own time. You'll see it here. When we talk about regions, I'll expand further on that. This looks all good. So let's hit apply and now let's render. And like that, it's done. It says render complete. Now in this window, we see a couple of things that really are cool. The first is that what was the output file, at least the first one. We see the format, 24-bit PCM, 48K Hertz, one channel, it also shows the time that it took to render the files. Remember, whenever we were over here, it said two files at seven seconds apiece, and it only took roughly half a second to render. And so that's 14.1x real time. And then finally, we see the peak here, negative 7.6. If the customer wanted it between, say, negative 9 and negative 6, this would be perfect. If they want it between negative 6 and negative 3, we would have to turn it up a little bit. Now there's one of a few things that we can do. We can either launch the file and it would be playing in our favorite media player, 
or we can show in Finder, which is what exactly what we're going to do in just a few seconds. There's a difference between close and back. Close says close this window and the render window. Back says simply close this window and go back to the render window. For now, let's just do close. And now let's look at Finder. Notice, as I said before, there's the renders folder. And inside the renders folder, we have the MP3 and the WAV file ready to be delivered to our client. That is what I'm talking about, good file organization. And that also brings us to the end of the fundamental sequence for Max. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comment section below. And be sure to know this, other videos will be coming in this channel. The link to the Maxiotrick playlist for the fundamental sequence is in the description below. And be on the lookout for the Reaper for Voice Talent course, where we'll take a deeper dive into how to set up Reaper for possible recording, editing, and processing workflows. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. This is Stephen Gonzalez with Stephen Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing you all the best, and you have a wonderful and wonder-filled day.